Welcome everyone to an arena video. This is Andrea Mangucci and this video is sponsored to you by channelfarball.com and Ultimate Guard. So let's just open it. And boom, what do we open? Okay, so first thing first, I guess the first thing first I have to link my article from Channel Farball because that article is pretty great. And if you ever need to play the tournament this weekend, you should definitely read it. So I'm going to link it to you right now. I guess I'm gonna short it because it's too long. So I'll go shorten link. I'm gonna shorten real link. And there it is. How beautiful. Thanks for a sweet article. Thank you, thank you. All right, here is the article. I'll, uh, I'll put it here, exclamation mark article gives you the article. Okay, uh, so as I said in my article, black is like the most good, the best, the best color <clears throat> by a pretty wide margin. And we have these three great black card. White kind of sucks, but we got three great white card. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to be the sealed. So I already know all the cards pretty much by heart, like by just looking at the pictures, but uh, you probably don't. So you can use this Cardboard Live uh, application in order to watch it. All right, so let's begin with, uh, let's begin with changing those leaves. You might wonder, man, good. Uh, yeah, that's, I don't know why I did that, but anyway. Uh, let's begin with white. Um, and I'm gonna put down all the playable cards. I want to make sure that this doesn't add lands anymore. All right, so white is pretty good. All the white cards are playable. So there's that. I'm just gonna put them down and then I'll see. I don't think there's a way for me to display them better. I guess I could do minus, but then the cards would be un un unknown to you. So I'm just playing, like this is just solid creatures. It's not anything great. Bonus Dias Rodman. Blue has uh, Curse for Meaning, Elite Instructor's fine. A couple of counter magic, sure. One with the stars is a nice removal spell. The Chimera is great. And then Witness for Tomorrow. I mean, this deck is fine. I mean, it's playable because I have uh, cause I have over here this blue-white rare that's very powerful. So, I mean, this could be a deck. This could be a deck, but let's see other colors first. I think black is insane from what I've saw. Slightly, all right, let's get in. Moji's favor, plus two, minus one, escape two. This is so, so good. You have to stay up, Julie. Yeah, come on, Julie. You can't go to sleep when I'm about to stream, right? <laughs> good morning, good morning. Agonized Remorse is a good rem a good discard spell. I believe in Seal to be very good. This Discardant Piper, it depends if you have like some way to sacrifice it. Mark Trident, two mana, two, one death touch. This is like two cards again, so this card is super good. Milling cards is super relevant. Margrasp, two copies, sign me up. All right, Elspeth Nightmare is a great saga. Kills a creature and then duresses your opponent. It's just like a huge two for one. Could like, could be called basic according to his command. Funeral Rites, also another great two for one. Fields the Graveyard and draws cards. Thresher's Blessing. Whenever the ability draws three cards, whenever you cast a spell, you lose one life. This card is great. This card is very good. Aspect of the Lamprey, this is just a, it's not bad, it's just a mind rot, but if you pair with this this, uh, this card with a green creature, which you usually do, you can really get a lot out of it. Wow, double drug of the Underlord. Oh yes, black is, black it is. Eat the Instinction, it's another removal spell that costs four, it's rare, and it's just pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it's exile plus surveil one. Nyx Marauder, good filler. Farika Spawn, whoa, another super good uncommon. We already have a lot of ways to put cards in our graveyard, and Farika Spawn is like, this might be the best black I've ever seen. Whoa, triple Venus, Venomous Hierophant. Hierophant. If you've seen my article, I told you how this Venomous Hierophant is, is amazing, and we got three of it, so yeah. Engrave Breaker Lamia comes to play, you just put into play directly the spawn of Farika in the graveyard, and then we can just... Uh, Escape for one less. So and we got a five mana four five four four. So I mean we're definitely gonna be play black. That black is like a stone like it's like if you look at the sideboard left, it's just all playable. Like black is just all playable. Well that red usually sucks. Let's see what's in red. I'm just taking a quick glance if I see some removal spell. There's one year blessing, but 
Yeah, no, I'll 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 do the cut later. Okay, so green is the other best color in the in the standard. Um, Moss Viper, this is solid. Nestian Orn Beetle, this is also solid. Cetacean Training, it depends. We'll see later. All right, Wolf Willow Haven means it's like a wild growth, but it is a good late game. I like this card. Higher of growth. This card is interesting. In draft, I think it's very good. It what it, what it does is like it just it's a great against very green, but I don't believe to be very good in seal because like there's way more removal spell. A three mana three three is exactly what I want. Uh, Omen of the Ant could be fine, although if we just play two colors, which looks like the case, I'm not going to play it. Relentless pursue it. It's another uh, way to fill your graveyard. Voracious Typhoon, another amazing green green card. And this is like, you know, green just loves this four mana four four and escape the amine. I I, I, I just built I just built my perfect deck. That's exactly what I want to build. Black green. Alright, this is six mana four four we'll principally five, so it's amazing. And then we even have Eternal Witness. Just mill two and Eternal Witness. Alright, this is like probably the easiest build I've ever done. This is gonna be black green and it's gonna take literally a second. Alright. Okay, this is 29 cards, although. Okay, so for Ica, I'm just gonna set aside all the non gray card. Uh, I guess I'm gonna set aside all the. I, look, look at my deck, it's so insane. Like all these cards, are like first pick over here. Special Nightmare. I guess I can cut one Funeral Rites, but it feels very bad. And maybe I can cut three Chiefs Blessing. Can I play? Yeah, I guess. We're playing best of one. I mean, sealed's low. When you cast a spell, you lose one life. Do I have any way to sacrifice an enchantment? Yeah, I guess I'm casting Threat and cutting Treacherous Blessing, although that feels very bad. I guess I can cut Agonize Remorse. Maybe I can cut Magi's Favor. I can cut like one Magi's Favor, although. Although Magi's favor with like all the self milling, it's really really good. <laughs> could, be, could be more than forty cards. Magi's favor is like it, it goes on your opponent creatures. I think you can cut one, but the fact that you can just kill X ones with this card is like super good. Probably don't need blessing. What's blessing? What's blessing? I don't need the blessing. Guess I don't. Mono black and constructed. Yeah, unfortunately, the first night of standard doesn't really <laughs> mean too much. But yeah, I, I, I believe mono black can be a thing in standard for sure. He'll jump there. Okay, so we are 24 cards. I think I want to play both of my discard spell. I think this card in sealed is very good. Especially because we don't really have a lot of early creatures. So, we kind of need this. I think I'm fine in playing only two draw cards. I need to go one card. All right. It could be a four draw, but all these four draw are just like, I just like, I'm beatable. Yeah. What is best theme in the deep? All right. I've wrote a long article on channelfireball.com. It's probably one of my best limited article ever. And uh, it's very long, so I mean, don't read it now because now there's a stream. But when I finish, and you want to get prepared for the PD for the G for the pre release, just make sure to read it. It's it's long, and there's a lot of lot of informations that I learned at the Team Series finals. Black Green is the best archetype by a pretty wide margin, and uh, and I got the luck to open basically. All the black good cards, like literally all the black good cards, and like some good green ones. So, okay, let's go one card. It's gonna be a creature, it's gonna be a spell because I have way too many. I might just be a discard spell, although I do think that Agonize Remorse is great. It's just that I don't want to cut any removal spell because you don't just don't cut removal spell or, or card draw. I already cut one funeral rights. All right, let me check if I have a Traveler's Amulet now because you always play Traveler's Amulet. All right, I don't. I don't have Unknown Shores as well, so I'm just gonna build the mana base 8 7. All right, green was weak. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was a time where green was very bad. 
although now it's fine it's a pretty good color now uh okay yeah I'm, i need to just open up my my deck for a better picture yeah this seems like a good picture to take All right. And we are ready to go. All right, let's change the picture of the deck. I'm going to put uh how was this how are the sagas in the pictures? Pretty cool. Sagas in the deck box picture are pretty cool. All right, yeah, I mean, this deck is so good. Okay, what do I need? Do I need more black or green? So I have a double green, a double green, double black, but green can fix me mana here. Black can, this does not scry. Black can draw me cards here. Black is a double black, but you don't need to need to play early. I think I'm gonna go more green, although, although black is probably better color overall in my pool, but I could be playing more green also because I've, Slightly more cheap things with green. I don't have answer right now in standard. I I mm. I've played a little bit of the early access. Not that I have any. I'm gonna start playing a lot of standard on on Monday. I mean, I'm gonna only be playing standard for very very many days, practicing for words as well as just enjoying to play a new standard over any other format. All right, that's my deck. Let's get down to it. Okay, whenever I play a limited deck, what I do in paper is that I learn by heart my deck and online, I just leave the deck open in my second screen or whatever. Are formats announced yet? I don't know, but I, I mean, I know them. But it's gonna be exactly what we all think, so it's, it's not that. Not that. Ooh, this is a weird uh, place to be in. All right, Traveler's Amulet. I put it with five cards in hand, so I kept seven. And I opened the Great Hand. Hello, Pokemon Master. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Esper with Ashiok is a great choice. It's a great choice. Okay, we do nothing in the first two turns, which is not great, but our opponent is also taking his low, so that's perfect. You can't play this on turn three, unfortunately, because if you do, you go to discard. That's just what happens with card draw spell on turn three. That's maybe why I needed a discard spell. Yeah, I probably needed a discard spell. But what am I going to cut? Like a four drop? I can't. I can't cut the four drop. Like my four drops are all amazing. Oh yes, Elspeth Nightmare, such a good card. Espeth Nightmare is a 3-mana enchantment that comes into play, destroys a creature. I mean, with power 2 or less, but usually on 3-mana there's 1. And then, and then it just does the rest. And then it exhausts the graveyard. This card is so amazing. This card is so amazing. It might even be constructive playable, honestly. Okay, they pass. So now the rest. Okay, they have Tricks the Sudden Storm. A good thing that all we got in this deck is removal spells. Okay, so I could play a High Hy Rex Tower Scout, or I could play a Farika Spawn, but I'm just kind of inclined in just playing Funeral Rites here. This might be strange, but I really want to hit land drops in this deck, and my point is not making me pressure at all. I think it's just a perfect time to just play a, a card draw spell. We're not gonna be mana efficient, but I really don't care about being mana efficient here. All right, kinda drew in the wrong order because it drew Monju's favor and milled and it didn't mill it. You always wanna mill the escape cards. <laughs> Red, white, aggro. <laughs> All right, exactly gonna put in graveyard. Wow, they didn't suck the omen, omen of the sea. Oh, I guess they, they didn't want to exile the omen of the sea but still very strange. Okay, so I'm just gonna, as soon as you cast, sure, I'm gonna just pass the turn. Yeah, I'm gonna pass the turn here and I'm gonna eat the instinction on this Thrix. Resolve. 
you might wonder, what if your opponent wouldn't have done it, would have just untapped? Then it's fine, it's fine. We're still like very much ahead. Whereas now, the, the thing is that if we just tap out for a Gravebreaker Lamia, what happens is that our opponent uh, plays their tricks, which is like an amazing card, and then untaps, attacks her for four. And then like what happens is that they could just, uh, you know, be on top with mana and like counter or remove a spell, kill our creature and stuff like that. Whereas now we are in total control over this game and uh, we're just gonna, you know, win the game with this much card advantage. It's very important to just, to just, you know, just, just like play your card advantage game instead of a... All right, I'm gonna play Gravebreaker, Gravebreaker Lamia here and put in the graveyard an undergrowth card. Now, this is not a close game. We have played every single two for one in the deck, probably. Let's play, you search for a card and you put it in your graveyard. So this is Entomb. So what we're gonna do is put a, I believe we have, a, yes, Voracious Typhoon in the graveyard. Probably pronounce it in a wrong way, but yeah. And now this card can't block and we have a four for lifelink, so they need to do something. And next turn we can escape this for six because there's a Lamia which makes it cost one less. And you have to exile four cards, which is a lot, but thankfully we have our deck mill already with Funeral Rites and Despot's Nightmare. This deck is, is insane. Nice, nice. Heliod, Heliod, Heliod is very good, yes, yes. Heliod is uh, definitely one of the best gods in Limited. In fact, uh, in our team series finals, Reed Duke passed Heliod to Javier, and Javier was white. That was definitely something something strange there, because yeah, I mean maybe Reed had the had the wrong read over over what Javier was drafting and passed Heliod, but it was definitely one of the best cards in, in, in the set. One with the stars. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is that our Gravebreaker Lamia is an enchantment, but its abilities still work. This this doesn't say it loses all ability. Okay, it says loses all the card types. So what's gonna happen is that our creature, our card in the graveyard will still cost one less, okay? That's very important to understand. I'm just gonna be mana efficient here. Since I have seven mana, I'm gonna play Farika Spawn and I'm gonna play Irax Tower Scout. Yeah. Then on top my opponent creature. Mono Black Devotion could be a standard deck, yes. Yes, you you have to build it. I, I I honestly don't really know about it, but it could be a good deck. Like I think because Bola Citadel is a very powerful card, and uh, because you know you have very many good three drop with War Strider and, and stuff like that. Remember this card can't block, so we're gonna probably ignore it right now. Okay, we don't have any. I guess they do have. This says power two or less, so it's not very good with the Acolyte. Mm, I'm just going to attack with a Tower Scout. I'm gonna leave this Farika spawn back, and I'm gonna uh, play this Typhoon from the graveyard. Actually, I probably pronounced it the wrong way, but it's fine. So I'm gonna dissolve four cards. You want, I, you, you need to be focused on what's in your deck in order to exile the proper cards. But, so in my deck, I have an eternal witness for permanent, so I want to keep permanence in the graveyard. And I have, uh, I think I have just that, so. Okay, my opponent bounced my whole board and attacked me for three. This card, if you if you read my article, I said on how this card does, is not good. Like, you might think that this card is very good because, you know, Sea God Revenge was broken. But <clears throat> that card is not Sea God Revenge, and it's not good. It's very different than what you would think. Because you were like, oh, you know, Secret Revenge was amazing, but this card is not. Yeah, this Gorgon is incredible. Yeah, I got this card passed, like, pick three or four in the Team Series final. And I was I was green black, and it's something good. Reverse of Buper is way stronger. Okay, Fierce Bunt Brawler, another very powerful card. What was the one in M20? No, it wasn't good either. Bounce spell are just bounce spell for six. They've been trying so after Sea God Revenge, they've been trying a bunch of bomb spell. A bunch of bounce spell that cost six, but target opponent sacrifice a creature. 
This cost three to escape. Sorry, cost six, but three three, three cards to escape. Later in the game, you'll see on how uh, the, the 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 cards in your graveyard is very relevant. You might be wondering how is it possible to have so many cards in hand and so many lands in play. I, I, uh, yeah, I just, <laughs> I don't really know how it's possible, honestly. So they can just now flashback the uh, under Underworld Charger if they need, they need all they need is five mana and three other cards, which they do. But what we're gonna do now is Myra's Grasp on the Vexing Goal. Oh, wow, okay. I did not expect them to have another card. Still fine though. Opponent's on 15. I mean, I know I can never lose this game, but you know, might as well just, just play properly. Remember, this card is very good, but it can't block. So in a blue-black deck, it's 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 not that good. In a blue-black deck. And this card, it's a curve filler. You could play it in draft, but you just don't play it in sealed. Like, like a two drop, two one, it's much better. A two drop, two two is much better. Just one mana, one one. Just in general, one drop are basically unplayable in limited. You could be playing them in, in draft or you know sideboard them in, but they are just general rule. One one drop are unplayable. Our opponents decide to uh, chum block, which means that a mice grasp will kill the vexing goal and the farika spawn will come into play, and uh, will just make my opponent sacrifice a creature. You're going to your first pre-release. Nice. Yeah, I'm also gonna go to pre-release today. I'm gonna take the train at 3 p.m. I'm going to my store friend. I'm gonna stay there for the day. I'm gonna come back home tomorrow. And then I'm gonna be back on Sunday. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot of pre-releasing today and tomorrow and Sunday. I really love it. Okay, let's go. I don't plan to lose a game with this deck, honestly, just saying, just saying. I would love not to lose any game with this deck. It could happen, obviously, in this best of one magic, it's very high variance, but... Alright. Is there any boar in this set? Uh, yeah, yeah, there is, there is. There is, there's a 5 mana 10 sick. Yeah, Nessian Boar. Okay, another super good end. Once again, we're on the draw, which makes this a little bit worse, but in limited, I don't expect people to attack me very much. So that's gonna be okay. Okay, okay. opponent is going aggressive with a Hero of the Pride. Uh, we have not drawn any 2-drop, which would have made us, if we were to play, this game would have been so much different. Okay, opponent with the Abzan. I always suggest not to play 3-color. General rule of Magic the Gathering limited. Yeah, I hope so. Cheruliolo. Very often I, you know, get requested to give help to those and I and I give help. I mean especially now that I have a pretty big knowledge of the format. Okay, I'm just gonna play a Elspeth Nightmare here and kill the Hero of the Pride. Although our opponent took a very good removal spell in Commanding Practice, no, sorry, Presence, which if the opponent has a land in hand now, they can just equip it to the Helios Pilgrim attack and make a human, which is pretty solid. Where can I see the deck you're playing now? Uh, if you're from the phone, uh, from, from the computer, there's Carbo Live active. If you're from the phone, I, I don't know. Elspeth Nightmare is going to discard an Elspeth Nightmare. My opponent has an Essian Boar lined up, and it was super important to take a look at my opponent's hand, because now we know that we can't just drag the Underlord Drew's Helios Pilgrim. We have to take the uh, drag for the Underlord for the Nessian Boar. So, as you can see, information on your opponent's hand has been crucial in this game. So what we're going to do is just play a 4-mana 3-3 three, Death three Touch, which is a very, very powerful card, because it blocks his Helios Pilgrim. Actually, it doesn't, because this is first strike, but still. Wow, I milled uh, three very good cards here. Mars Trident, Mars Grasp, and Agonizing Remorse. But that's okay. This three, th there's three, four we're gonna get in. 
and we can't block it, but we will block the one ones. There are four fixers is a common. Yeah, but you don't need to splash in Elspeth Nightmare, you know? It's not required to splash a three drop. That's just a basically a removal spell for two power. Like this card is powerful, but if you splash it, it's, it's not as powerful. Like people, as I said in the article, way over splash. And... Okay, Nessian Boar, this is a instant, so I can play this anytime I want. I should have, I made a mistake here. I should have gone in full control and played the Drag for the Underworld for two mana. So that was a very big mistake. Because what would have happened was uh, my opponent. Hmm. Yeah. Because we could have played this for two mana and that we could have played Funeral Rites in the same turn. But since I didn't put the, the, the full control. I did this saga triggered out and I couldn't do anything. I would have also exiled this, which is very relevant. Okay, so the play that, I, that we can make are uh, just funeral rites and Myers Grasp on this 3 4. And then we can just trade with this Nashian Boar. And, and that's like good because we draw a card and this card dies. I think it's okay. I'm okay with that. And then we could just. Combat this needs to be a combat damage, so this is gonna be a zero one. So I think I think I like this line. Three three dead touch. When this check can can block, I, I trade. So now what happened is that we trade here, I draw a card and I take two damage. Of course, if they have a removal spell, which is like a pacifism, I'm gonna take twelve damage and die. But I think that Yeah, probably I just over risked it. Probably I overrisked it. <laughs> but let's see what's happening here. Wasn't Drag plus Meyer better? I could have done that, yes, I could have done that. But I just wanted to block this guy and draw a card. I'm happy with the trade here. And I have a 3-3 three, three death touch, they have a 10-6 that doesn't have a, you know. I, it, 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 was, it was probably too risky. What I did was probably too risky. I, now that I think about it, I shouldn't have done it. But let's see if it pays out. So we, what we should have done in this game was draw step, funeral rights on here. Okay, opponent does not attack. They don't want to trade and give me a card. Interesting. Uh, okay, now all creatures able to block this guy, block it. Which means that the card is pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna play it. I say Typhoon, but do I pronounce it right? Because I don't know if I pronounce it right. I'm gonna play a Typhoon and pass the turn. Now, if I put it with attack with this, I can drag it to the Underworld, Under Underworld, and then I can block differently. So this is gonna be very, very good here. I expect to blow out my opponent here if they go for combat, because they go two mana kill this and then block the other card. Skola Grove Dancer is pretty good. Late game, it just fills your graveyard. Oh, wow, they just milled an unbeatable card. I mean, it's very beatable, you can kill it. But if it goes unchecked, this card is insane. But overall, milling, milling is very good in this format because you have uh, escape cards. We draw two cards and then kill it. Hmm, or we could do that too. I was thinking about, I was thinking about killing the opponent creatures. But I guess block, I guess, I guess killing it's, I guess drawing two cards is better. <laughs> this is just, could be very greedy, but. So, all creatures able to block this, they block it. Whenever Nash and Boar becomes blocked, that creature's control draws a card by, by, by a creature. So, by, but first thing first. Yeah. They want to draw two cards, they don't want to take four damage. All right, you sold me. I think drawing cards is better than take that. Yeah, you sold me. I'm gonna double block this. And then I'm gonna drag it to the Underworld. All right. I think it's better to, I think it's better to draw two cards than, than like killing two creatures at this point. Typhon, okay, that's good. All right, so we drew two cards. I mean, it's two lands, so. But, 
So we go to six here. This one doesn't trigger. And now we have like very good blocker. I have a three, three coming up next turn. And like, I'm supposed to draw some spells at some point. All right, so the Rise for Glory, the Archon into play. Now I don't have any flyer blocker and I could die from flyers. Farika spawn. It's not good enough. I think I need to attack here. I think I need to attack with both. All right, I should have played this pre-com, but that was a mistake. I forgot about this effect. Okay, so our opponent now can like clock us. We need to top deck removals, but for this or we die. We can also draw a um, Eternal Witness. I don't think there was a way to save this. I guess like for, if I'd like double block this, I would have been on 10 life, but then I would have drawn back to back land. So I would have inevitably died to this. So at the end of the day, long story short, in limited, if you draw 10 lands, it's, it's hard. It's it's just hard even against the uh, various. All right, Moss Viper, that's fine. Can I, the name is uh, Acolyte of something. Remove a spell. All right, good game. I can't expect any of these creatures to die. And uh, none of these flies, and so we lost. Ah, I said I would have never lost a game with this deck, and I already picked up a, a loss in the second game. All right, that's not great, but hopefully we can we can win the rest. It's all right. Okay. Anyway, um, if you're interested in getting some information for your for, for your pearlies this this weekend, you can check out my article from channelfireball.com. Uh, where I basically uh, basically I put together all my thoughts from what I've learned at the team series finals this last weekend I love the I love the algorithm so much like you just always get two colors three lands four spells it's just it's just pure magic honestly it's just so much better Nessian board is a bad card I disagree Nessian board is a very good card Especially if you put the 5 mana 5 3 that gives trample to all your creatures and the enchantment for 2 that gives plus 1 in trample. Alright, let's attack. And they pass. Unfortunately, we can't punish them. I mean, it's not that we punish, but like, not playing 1 2. Like, we lost the previous game because we were in the draw and didn't play any. Any one or two drops, so we were just too much behind. Okay, I'm gonna just use my best mana and uh, play a Venomous Hierophant here. Omen of the Sun, ay ay ay, get blow out here. Blown, getting blown out pretty badly. I could have seen it coming, but I didn't. We have three card, hopefully hoping I mail a escape card, but it did not. I mean if you don't mail escape card, it just means now I have four cards in my graveyard ready. Or something like Ooh, whoa, Strider. This card this card is so powerful. But you know what's also powerful? Eat the extinction. That is also powerful. So I'm just gonna eat the extinction on the Wolf Strider immediately. It's, this this card is just amazing. Escape comes back as a 5-4 <laughs> and uh, you sacrifice, uh, you sacrifice another creature only. I've played this card two or three times already. Are you experiencing any disconnects? No, no, no. My internet is going very well. I've, y yesterday night, I watched some streams and uh, a lot of people were, were, were getting problems. But for me, it was... I mean, I didn't play yesterday. I generally I just play magic only only when I stream in the morning online I, I play a lot of paper magic but online only that I'd rather just stay in the bed and watch some some good streamer the streamer that I watched yesterday it's uh, Profumato it's an Italian streamer who plays uh, mainly limited I really enjoy his I really enjoy his company so in case you're Italian uh, I definitely suggest you 
that. Okay, now we just play our Fierce Bench Brawler. A six mana four four. It comes into play, fights with the creature, boom, just kill her four drop, and we're tough down to three for three. It's just pretty, pretty crazy. If you ask me. Fierce Band Brawler and the, the, the Cato Blep, the two six mana basically like Shriek Maw are, are amazing. We went, I went one one. I managed to lose a game against Mono Red. It was, it was it was really unexpected. I did not expect to lose that game against Mono Red. And then we lost the trophy because of my loss there. Alright, National Org Beetle, you just want to play the main phase. How popular is Magic in Italy? Uh, in it it Italy is the third country for, for Magic players after America and Japan. Magic is very popular in Italy indeed. I don't think I want to play Aspas Nightmare on a Mirror 1 1 token. I'd just rather pump my Nirshan or the Beetle and offer the trade here. They could double block on my Brawler, I don't mind it. Magic is not very popular as a. as a Oh, -hoo, we milled the Farika spawn. Boom! Yeah, I mean, we played three of this card. Alright, I'll go with Final Death on that one, sure. I think I'm gonna go with just just Farika spawn. Opponent will always have that um, this one one unless they chump block with it. So I'm just rather just get my five six here, which make them sacrifice a creature and attack for seven because this one gets a counter. Loving Ulo, yeah, Ulo's Ulo's. Yeah, I think like I have a lot of decks that I want to be trying in in in, in standard. Honestly, very very many. I, I I don't necessarily know which one is the best right now. Yes, I even I even played Phoenix, which was surprisingly good. Blue red Phoenix, like it's definitely not gonna be like on my my radar for now. But it's a deck that a lot of people love. Is the Phoenix in standard, and I think with thirst for knowledge, underworld breach, and like a bunch of other cards. Once again, three lands, four spells. How could you not love the the, sh the 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 shuffler for best of one? How can you not love it? Okay, we also have finally some some cards to do in the early game. Yeah, I'm just gonna put these on a forest. And next turn, I can cast a grave breaker Lamia. Very very powerful. This card on turn. Oh, it's not true. Sorry, I I, I can't cast this next turn. Ooh, I love Aliros and 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 Raptured. This is this is so powerful. Five mana for two three, but when comes to play tapped and the, it gives birth to a three two, and when it dies, it doesn't tap. So it's basically like a five five, in a different way, but it's basically a five five. I'm gonna just ignore these two creatures. I don't want to kill these. I'm just gonna go agonizing remorse. I think. Yeah, I think so. I don't want to. I don't want to draw cards right now. Wow, they have Ashiok in hand. Oh my god! <laughs> Get out of here. I don't. Really, I didn't really see what they have rest, but <laughs> don't don't show me that Ashiok, please. Okay, so they have mana drain up. Sorry, memory drain up. Oh yeah, Cox is so bad. Whoa, Maja's favor from the top. Now they can't counter. That's weird. All right, gonna go grab Burker Lamia. Hello, Gnip. Or good night. Okay, Grave Breaker Lamia, four four lifelink, so we'll easily win this race. Now I have to put in a graveyard something. So we have Farika Spawn, which is like amazing. I can also put in a graveyard Moji's favor. How do you guys think about that? Yeah, Moji's favor looks cool. My opponent was probably gonna go final breath here or final death here, and then I have a Moji's favor in the graveyard. To kill this? Hmm. I think I like Moja's Favor. Moja's Favor is a very powerful card. Very, very underrated at first. Plus two plus one that returns. It's very nice. Escape only for two. So if I put in, if like some creature dies, like if I just put something very large, it's gonna be harder. Okay, the attack, I'm not gonna block. Cause you know, my Grey Breaker line, I can't just die to a four if I want it and taps this. I don't play modder. I, I, I really don't care about it. Oh, Elspeth Nightmare. Wow, and kill a next Sea Guardian. That's insane. Okay, this one unfortunately adds only green, so I do have green problems with this hand. 
But my, I assume my opponent is going to block with the Sea Guard, and I'm just going to kill it with my Brawler here. And also, this is lifelink, so that's just great. Also, opponent could also, I mean, double blocking like this is risky because if I put something in the graveyard, I can just Mojo's favor and kill that. But I don't have double black, so I can't double spells. So I'm just gonna go Fierce Bond Brawler and shoot this Nyx, Nyxborn Sea Guard. I'm not. I'm gonna ignore this reflection here because if I start, if I start like caring about this, then this one untaps. So my opponent is just on the back foot right now. They have this very clunky counter. I really dislike this counter. You, you should just not play this counter. You can only play this counter, I don't know, maybe in draft, if you're like a, a very controlled deck, but you still just don't play this counter. The three mana uncommon one is fine. And even the three mana common one, the, the, the two three mana counter are fine, but the four one, no, four, four, four drop counter is just, it's just very bad. And if you have the Nayad, the two three, that is going to go, oh, I justify playing this, but you still playing cancel, even in get case. So yeah, it's too bad. Okay, opponent decided that's enough. That racing five damage with four for lifelink, it's not a good play, and I agree with them. Uh, funeral rites. Okay, so now we have a bunch of choices here. So our opponent is mana up with a memory drain. So we just want to play the worst card of our hand, which I believe to be um, funeral rites. It's very important to, you know, just just play like the worst cards whenever your opponent's mana up, and the best card when your opponent's not mana up. Why don't play play modern? Because there's a lot of uh, very many better formats than modern in Magic, so I don't I don't have infinite time. Rigats. Good morning, Mister Rigats. Thank you for the fourth subscription in the month. Opponents cried. Unfortunately, I was watching in my subscription and did not check the how they cry, but it doesn't matter. They have two cards in the graveyard. I could offer to trade with at least a Fierce Bound Brawler, but that's just, this just does not look appealing at all to me. Oh yeah, Legacy is great. Infinite better, <laughs> like, it's not even comparable. Okay, to pass again. I have uh, a good hand here. Okay, what do we do? So I could play Venomous Hierophant, and then I could play Moji's Favor on this. I think it's actually it's no, I can't do that. Sorry. Hmm. What what should we do here? I really want to kill this guy so that I can start attacking. But if I do, I guess I guess I'm going to actually I can't do that. <laughs> this is close. All right, let's cast Elspeth Nightmare and see what happens. Is Alios good enough in a Thassa deck? In, in Constructed? Wow. I did not think about that. It could be. I mean, Alios is great in, in another counter magic. Interesting. Alios is great in, uh, in, in Limited. It could even be very good in Constructed, honestly. Okay, I think it's about time that I, that I start attacking. Because if they have a 2-3, it's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to do much. So I'm just going to offer the trade with the Feral Bond Brawler. I'm not going to offer the trade with the Grave or Halamia. I can't cast... Oh yeah, Esper Nightmare, yeah. There is a way to interact with... They printed, uh, they printed the field of the dead. Chill Yolo, you don't know what you're talking about. It's fine not to like Legacy for various reasons, but don't just make up reasons because of that. Astrolabe and Oko are just like in one deck. I mean, Astrolabe, Oko is in multiple decks, but there's Red Elemental Blast, which deals with it very well. Also, there's a tree drop, which is very expensive in Legacy. So, it's fine. I mean, if you don't like the format, you don't have to, you know, <laughs> say things for sure. Like, like, the thing is this with, like, people and the internet. You don't necessarily need to give your point on everything, right? There's no one forcing you to say your opinions. Okay, let's go... Kill the Aliros and Enraptured. We're gonna sacrifice it to the lamp, but that is okay. Yeah, but you're asking in a weird way, right? You don't just asking, say, oh, you know, uh, why do you go to the restaurant? Isn't that completely garbage? You don't really ask things that way. Minus, uh, one, four, six. <laughs> All right, that's a new record, folks. 
Thank you, mental misstep. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the stream. If I would ask, uh, let's say, you know, hey, I saw you bought your la I saw you bought a new card. Isn't Fiat the worst ever card ever made? You know, you don't really say that. You say, oh, you bought a Fiat. How is it? You know, it's it's okay. I'm just uh, I'm just telling you. Okay, so we have a completely advantage here. It, that's fine. We don't need to. We don't need to. We don't need to talk about that necessarily. Okay, our opponent finally found a fifth land to play a final death. Hello, Phoenix. Uh, let's attack with all. It will probably just kill this. I mean, I could also Moji's favor something. Like, my graveyard is so full right now that I think I'm fine in. Oh, wait. Actually, I should probably use this, right? Can I do both? I think I can do both. Yeah, I can do both. Yep. All right. So let's Moji's favor a uh, Hyra, Hyrax Tower Scout. This one's 5 2, so it doesn't die to the land, but. I want to exhaust spells because I have a, a Eternal Witness in my deck. How good is Elspeth? It's good. It's good. It's not great. I think it's fine. I mean, it's a, it's a Planeswalker that, like, under old circumstances would have been pretty good. <laughs> right now, the power level is very high, so I don't really expect Elspeth to be very much played, but it's going to be okay. Yeah, Jund... Jund is tough. Jund is tough because not playing blue in Legacy means that you're really kind of struggling against the unfair decks, which are very powerful. But if the metagame doesn't see... If your metagame doesn't have too many combo decks, it's fine. Okay, we're just going to suck this Wolf Willow Haven, Haven and make a 2-2. So you see the power of this card, right? In early game, it was a minor ramp that made us play like a lot of things early. And then in late game, it just turns into a 2-2. So very good card, Wolf Willow Evan, a must play in all the formats. No, no, no need to block anyone, don't worry. Elspeth Conquers Death. Oh, I don't know the name necessarily. The five mana, I don't remember what it does exactly, sorry. I don't remember what it does. It's a saga that does a lot of things. It's greatly limited, I'm sure, but I don't think I think it's not struggling constructed. Okay, they play in a harpy, which is Weird. I wouldn't put this card in my seal deck. Scavenging Harpy. And Discord on Piper. Hmm. Is Constructor playable? I hardly think so. It could be, but I hardly think so. Okay, I put it as, as a lot of two ones, which were kept in check by my Moji's favor. Although, since they had this, it's pretty good that I chose to play this earlier. Okay, I'm going to attack here. Um, I guess I'm going to attack with with this, because if I open a double blocks, I can kill all the creatures regardless here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna attack with everything. That could block like this, that's gonna be okay if they do. Okay. It's a strange block. It's a block that I wouldn't recommend. By the way, you're seeing how powerful is Moji's Favor, right? Moji's Favor is a very powerful card. We are seeing it here. It's just over and over killing things. Like, this is just a combat trick. It's not only a, a, a removal spell. It's a repetitive combat trick. And that's what it makes it so good. I'm playing only one, but because my deck is broken, I would always play two of this card if I could. It's fine. Yeah, I guess you could play the Heaven in Constructed. I, I, I mean, if you are relying that you, you don't want to have creatures, let's say you're playing like, you know, a deck that doesn't want to go under clear out yarn and stuff like that, then it could be okay. Yeah, my name is Zero Nine because I was born in 2009. Okay, let's put Moji's Favor on my guy. Actually, I don't want to do that because then they put Moji's Favor on my guy and he dies. So it's better if I don't do that. I have seven cards in my graveyard. I'm just going to use this to kill this goat. Whatever, let's just kill this goat. I have so many cards in my graveyard and I'm not really using them currently. So I'm just gonna aggressively just, just attack attack for two and not let my opponent... Uh... Also, there's like... 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was when I was 30 years ago, indeed. Hello, Bucho Tommy. Echo la I love Orlando's Pursuit. Really favorite, my, one of my, one of my favorite card draw. Ooh. Sorry. Sorry for the sound, but I just felt like, ah. Oh. You, you know that feeling? When when your three mana card draws you a land, a turn of witness, and puts an escape card in a graveyard, this is supposed to be a four for one. Four for one. Cast one card and you draw four cards in limited. Wow. How? <laughs> Find that on a token? Dio. Sorry, opponent. You're you're having a tough, tough day today. Alright. How many cards have you made deck? 11. It's not that many cards. When is what life is it? Four. Sure. I mean, I'm gonna probably just take a venomous hero font here. Actually, not two mana left. Whatever. I'm just gonna take a nasty and orn beetle just to have lethal next turn. Yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna lose this game. Did you see you stream? I did not. Is white broken and sealed? It is not. <laughs> white, it's not very good. It's fine, it's an aggro deck, but as you can see in my article, Piccolo 9527, which I suggest to everybody to read. I know that reading is very hard these days. In order to read, you really have like, like, like for me to read, I need, really need like a strong reason. For example, if I was in school, I would need to read because otherwise I couldn't, uh, let's say, pass the test, but other than other than that reason, you could read if you want to win the pearlies today, or at least have an edge over people who don't read, and you can read my article. And I can pass the turn. All right, we go to three, opponent should have probably scribed in upkeep, but anyway, we go to three and one. Our first loss has been a brutal one for sure. Because we died to a flyer after being in total control of the game, but it of, it also it, it often happens that in limited. I was born in nineteen oh zero nine. Yeah, I mean after after I finished after I finished school last summer. So how, how long was it? Seven months ago. I don't think I've ever read anything anymore. I'm I'm I have struggled I've struggled in reading this sentence here. What's it written? Combo decks focus on the like, can continue. I can continue. That's why, if you don't know the spoiler of this set, it's gonna be very hard for you to play the prelims because these cards have like twenty lines of text each. Every card is like the longest ever. Every card is like the longest ever. So if you haven't read in a long time, like me, it's gonna be very hard to play this the seal format. You know, also another thing that I. All right, this is one of my favorite hand, a very bad one with a two lands, mana call, call screwed, and one removal spell, but it's neat. Oh, and other things that I read are memes. Yeah, that's the other thing that I read. Just go on my own, go in the bathroom, just stay there 30 minutes reading memes all the time. And then send, send, send the link, sending them, uh, sending them to my friends. In the meme group. Memes are the best. Alright, Brutus Wayne. Vamos. Perfect hand. Alright, let's call all together. Forest, 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 forest. No, two drop green? No. Alright. Forest, 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 forest. Forest. Dio bone, another two drop green. Okay, now I need to put the stop in upkeep. I did not. I did not want to come down to this, but it's time. But it's time to put a stop in upkeep. It's time, guys. Our opponent just pass the turn. Don't play anything. Or if you want to play something, okay, perfect. All right, stop in upkeep. You might wonder why, Mango, do you put the stop in upkeep? Because when you put the stop in upkeep, the client knows that you need something, and the thing that we need here is a forest. You can't use a stop in upkeep very often. It's it's something that you need to use only, only when you're desperate. I was very desperate right now. Whenever enchanted land, look at this now. 
Boom! Aspetta un attimo. Let's not make mistakes. All right. All right. You can't go, opponent. No, no, that's out of here, bro. You can't use that for every draw step from now on. All right, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a story to tell you. Uh, PT, whatever, the last one on Arena, the seventh. Uh, day two, I'm against Javier, and we both know about this, the stopping upkeep. And I'm playing my ramp deck, he's playing Blue Rain Flash. He's on one life with, like, a Nisa land back. And like he has knees, I have nothing, so I'm gonna lose the game for sure. Like the more time it passes. And then I put the stopping upkeep. I click and I draw shifting ceratops. And it kills Xavier. A game three. Ah. <laughs> it wasn't on cover, it was like, you know, one of those uh, back game. Okay, anyway, opponent has Espa's Nightmare, which is like the best card ever. Because I was planning to win this game very easily. Right now, I can struggle. Okay, so what can I do here is cast the Acolyte Affliction and then recast this Nestian Horn Beetle. Actually, that's not true. What am I talking about? I'll just play this Great Breaker Lamia. Yeah, you, do, you draw the card very slowly because there's a stop in upkeep. That's funny. Okay, once again, I'm going to put my best friend in the graveyard. Moji's favor. No, ma che madonna ho fatto! No, they have this exile thing. Tio Bono, che scoglione. Uh, it's, it's actually not that bad, because I can cast this. I have two cards in my graveyard. Sure, okay, it's, it's not the worst. That's fine, that's fine. Our Saga's enchantment, yes, Saga's are enchantment. Okay, they play the Harpy. All right, I put his Haze graveyard. I put it goes like a knight in the cemeteries, and just gives bad, uh, just, just hates them. Brutus Wayne. <laughs> It's really okay. Anyway, so I'm just gonna examine my graveyard next turn. So I'm just gonna play a dude and pass. All right. In the meanwhile, this great Burke Alignment, right? It's a five on a four full life lane. It's like so good. All right, let's play this guy. Hopefully, opponent doesn't kill it because then it would exile it too. It's pretty risky to play this guy, but like, what am I playing? Acolyte of Affliction? Nah. I just, I, pff, I don't know what to do. I'll just play this. Please opponent, don't kill it. Please don't kill it. 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 There is a draw step between upkeep and draw yet. Yeah. Not don't kill the opponent, just cry. Nice. All right, remember, sagas pop off in draw step. Remember that. So what, what you can do is take in the draw step and then do something in your draw step to get more information if you have to cast an instant. It's something that people don't do nearly enough. If you play on arena, you have to put a stop. You have like go full control. If you want to do something between the 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 saga and like the the upkeep or, or whatever. No, it happens in draw step. It happens. Sorry. No, it happens in draw step, right? It's kind of the saga is happening in draw step. After your draw step. Yeah, after your draw step. All right, anyway, they play the 3-3 three, three death touch, which we're gonna Mire Grasp. And then attack. And then I play Eternal Witness, which is Parakaboya great. How would you make stopping paper magic? I mean, you just tell your opponent, I, I, I stop. <laughs> paper magic is easy to play. <laughs> you, just, you just say, you know, in my upkeep, I'll do this thing. All right, anyway, do we want to return this removal spell or this Hierophant? I think I'm going to return the removal spell, actually. In which is your main phase one? What? Okay, well, uh, it's just a light swear. Oh, wow. They Emojis favor my Grimberg or Lamia and then Katoblepid it. That's good. I'm so glad I took back this. Actually, let's play, boom, my fierce band brawler. Don't play scavenging Garpy in your in your seal deck. This card is, is not good. It's just actually pretty weak. It's just too weak. It's a three mana two way. It's fine, like I guess Finkel has sideboarded in, but 
It's not a main deck card at any point. How do I use it? It's spelled like this. But how do you use it? I mean, whenever whenever something weird happens, you just say it. It's okay. Yeah, there's no rules. All right. Anyway, what do we do? I could Myers grasp this Asphodel and let my opponent with pretty bad blocks. I think it's okay. Do I want to tap this? Whatever. I'm just gonna make a wolf here. Yeah. By the way, we're able to win this game only because we put the stop in upkeep, if you remember correctly. There's two rats in this deck. One is white, one is red. So, nothing will stop us. Don't stop me now, because I'm making a wolf 2-2. Two, two. So, wind tricks are bad limited now? I mean, when, when were they good? Was there a time when wind was good? Also, was there a time when blue was good? I, I, I don't remember that. All right, Victoria! Four and one. Uh, ex yeah. I, I mean, it, it doesn't make it. It doesn't make any sense. It's not. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's not. No, the first thing it says uh, is wrong. I mean, you don't necessarily have an answer. To grave breaker Lamia. Ba-bam. Ba-bam. To cripple the Greek name. That's true. That's true. We have to cripple the Greek name. All right. All right. Oh, such a beautiful hand. We don't even need to put any upkeep stop here. Backlist. All right. If you are... I, I, don't, I don't... If you are on your computer, you can check it pretty easily. Oh, red. I thought, I thought this color was banned and sealed. I'm surprised to see it. I thought they said, you know what? You can't play any red card in your deck. Because this color sucks. All right. I'll put, a, I'll put it with no block. I have this feeling. This is like the worst attack of the history of magic. I don't know why I did it. Because I basically traded two da zero damage for one. And I get two life, though. Boom. Red blue best colors. I think it's actually the opposite. Actually, why is red banned? I, I, it was a joke. It's just not very good. Red is like, red is like the basically the worst commons in the set are red, which makes it pretty sad. And everybody always cries. Poor, poor red. Okay, let's play. All right, now you talk about. You don't think about what's in the format. My opponent could have no escape. The the counter that counter enchantment or creature. I mean, it's not called no escape, but it's very similar. So we're gonna play relentless pursuit here. Yeah, green and black are, are amazing. Exapus. I've already been seeing this a while and you'll be here, but if you read my article, there's everything. Oh, Dio Bono, que figa. Yeah, breaking on the pursuit is something that sometimes it happens. You can't complain about how unlucky you got. But other than that, it's going to be okay. All right, no attacks here. This Ordea of Mountain Blades really got me good. Now they can even use this ability or play a Thirst for Meaning. How does it feel to just play this and just get a basic land, whereas your opponent just plays the Thirst for Meaning at the same time? It kind of it feels pretty bad. It feels pretty bad. Welcome everyone to a new Legacy video, says uh, Mr. Oh, Miss Voxy, rating with a party of 400. Good morning, good night, Voxy. Hello everybody from your stream. We are also playing Limited today. And we are playing a beautiful green-black deck, very powerful. I hope you had a, a great day of limited. Limited POG, indeed, indeed. And uh, good night everyone, sleep well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Voxy. I met Voxy at the last, at the last uh, uh, GP Austin for the first time. And uh, she even brought me a... <laughs> a thing that I forgot. So and, and so that was very it was very very it was very important meeting. Very important meeting. <laughs> Indeed. Alright. Let's just play a venomous hierophant because Mango wouldn't give me his credit card. Exactly, exactly. I, I forgot my credit card. So that's definitely something that I that was uh, that was important to to to, to remember. Ooh, we made a Farika spawn! Bing! Okay, so put it. I thought they had a counter, so that's why I played this like 
weaker card instead of the Grip Breaker Lamia. And now, unfortunately, they have this two, two, this one three that keeps all my board at bay, which really sucks, honestly. I might just trade, but I'm just afraid I play like the the new fairy duelist, the one three uncommon that gives that takes out the, the toughness or whatever it is. So I'm just not gonna attack with my stride. I mean, that can do this trade whenever I please. With a difference that I just sacrifice the next turn. And witness for tomorrow. Mm. Draw. Okay, I, gu I guess I should have traded. I guess I should have traded. That was maybe a mistake. Okay, what do we do? I'm just gonna play a Great Burke Lamia. Ooh, I have a plan. I have a plan. I ready for my plan. Hello, Gira. I have a plan, guys. How many cards am I in my graveyard? Just 10. No big deal. Just 10. Classic. Classic graveyard of 10 cards. Okay, okay, okay. What do we do? No, my plan is not very good, honestly. It's not just just not a very good plan overall. Alright. Let's just change plan now. I'll play my Grave Breaker Lamia. I'll put into the graveyard. Uh, I guess I put into the graveyard this this typhoon instead of the Mojus thing this time. Then I'll pay two mana. I'll kill the witness for tomorrow. And then I'm gonna attack with all. Just classic two mana removal spell. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, right? I offer to trade here because they have a Farika spawn. So when Putin does something next turn, I'm gonna escape this and just boom, destroy them. If they play a Relic of Progenitus here, I basically die. But other than that, my opponent is in a big trouble. Attack with a 2-1 if they block spawn. Now, I promise that they don't block if they're smart because this is in the graveyard face up. So if they don't do that, I just missed on three life and a counter. So what your plan was was good only if they made a the wrong play, which is sometimes it's fine to play a game of magic thinking about your opponent making a wrong play, but in general, you'd rather not do that. And in general, just, just think that your opponent makes the good play. That, I mean, obviously that can not be true in pre release, but sometimes it's just be like, you can just level yourself and your opponent just makes, you know, the play that you don't want to happen. And then you're in trouble. All right, opponent, you are also in trouble here. You have six cards in end. I hope all you have is counter magic, because they suck. Yeah, Spirit Mantle, it's a fine cyborg card. I wouldn't suggest you to play in the main deck. I mean, I guess with Thirst for Meaning could be. Ooh, Tassa's Oracle. John Finkel was actually pretty close to kill me with this card in our in our super long match at the, at the Team Series Finals. Incendiary Oracle. Pretty good 2 2, but I mean, it's not the time for 2 2 0. Okay, so this one can become a 3 3, but this guy will become a 4 a four, 4 soon. So he's gonna go Farika Spawn, Exile Spells. We have a Eternal Witness in our deck, so let's Exile Spell only. This card is so amazing, Farika Spawn. Alright, so they'll sacrifice a creature. They will sacrifice a Tassa's Oracle, and then they'll have this, which is a 3-2, which doesn't kill the Nessian or the Beetle. Keith Martini, exclamation mark article, gives you my article about Limited. It's very, very detailed. If you know how to read, I definitely suggest you that, that read. It takes a while, but you can do it. After reading your article, uh, would you say it's gonna be a safe bet to try and jam black green in draft or in sealed? I mean, in sealed, you can't really jam. You have to open. Like, I open, like, if you look at my deck, it's just amazing, right? But sometimes it could be right to play blue or red. I doubt it, but it could, I doubt it I would ever build blue or red, but could happen. If you don't know how to read Head Dune, you can watch my stream, that's fine. Or you can listen to Lim Lords of Limited and Limited Resource. There are two very good podcasts about Limited that I really suggest you. Don't be trapped by Thirst for Meaning, okay? Don't be trapped by Thirst for Meaning. Don't see, oh, I have two Thirst for Meaning, I have to play blue. No, you don't have to play blue. This card is fine. It's a card draw. It's cool, but, you know, <laughs> card draw, it's not necessarily the name of the game. If you play Cube Draft, then it could be, but if you play Limited, see uh, normal, it might not be. Dom draft, drum drafting. What's what's drum drafting? 
Yeah, I suppose. I, I don't. It, it depends on what you open. Of course, it's just classic sentence. It depends what you open. But at the end of the day, you are going to just... Like, like black and green are the best colors. I assume a lot of people will be black green. Not only is not only is black green like the two best color, it's also just it pairs it pairs so well, you know? Okay, anyway, they have a, I'm just gonna attack with all my creatures. I'm not gonna care too much about what's happening here. Also this Nersha Orb Beetle, it's so good. I mean I don't wanna say every card is so good, but like it is, it is. Every card is so good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Black has no bad cards. Like if you look at red, red has like I don't know many commons, but like seven or five or six unplayable commons. Yeah, I mean sets where there's two leading color are sometimes interesting because they just they just are very cool in seeing what's that. But let's, let's for example, let's take a look at my red. Let's take a look at my red. Unplayable, unplayable, okay. Medium filler, medium filler, medium filler. Unplayable, medium filler, basically unplayable, good, um, basically unplayable, okay, you know? So if you look at my red, obviously this was a bad color, but this is an example how now, look, red commons are really, really bad, okay? This is, this is all my cards, okay? So it's gonna be very hard for me. Obviously you can open sometimes, but like, like if you look at my, at my black in the sideboard, not even the one in the main deck, it's all cards that I could play. There's not a single card that I would not play. Like, I'm even not playing like Painful Truth. You know, uh, sorry. You know, so just, obviously like I opened the good pool, but overall, I doubt it's gonna be p possible. Fruit of Tizerus and Temple Thieves are bad. Yes, that's what they said in the article. Fruit of Tizerus is the only bad card in black. Temple of Thieves are just a 2 mana 2 2. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, sometimes you play it. Why well, is Coveraging Harpy bad? It's a 3 mana 2 1. The stats are not good at all for limited. And its ability is marginal. Uh, it's a sideboard card because it pretty you play sideboarded. So you can sideboard it in if you play against, like, let's say me in this matchup. You can sideboard it in, but I wouldn't ever start with it in the main deck. Do you play Pro Release? Oh, yeah, I'm going to play three Pro Release. I'm going to play Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday morning. I'm going to just go there today. I'll take the train, 3 p.m., go to Porto Santo Elpidio, and play three Pro Release. Your winner meeting condition. Would you recommend sealed or drafting for value in MTGO? Hello, David. Um, I would recommend. Uh, I mean, I think I think sealed and draft best of three are the two best thing to do if you wanna just play for free on on arena. Obviously, that that means that you have to start paying at the beginning, but then you can just acquire enough uh, wild cards that you can just play for free for a while. Okay. I mean, that's fine with lands and spells. Is it pretty okay against escape? The thing is that no, David Lark, don't play stuck cats di carta. Mamma mia, che schifo! What the print is? All right, let's go thought erasure on turn two. We exiled that card. It's very relevant. Earlier we played this and it got Ashiok. Let's see if we let's see if we got Ashiok again. Ooh, Wavebreaker Hippocamp. This card is amazing. We have a removal spell though. I took Erasure. It's the worst counter spell ever printed. Minions Return e la merda. E Omen of the Dead is fine. Okay. I would say that my opponent's hand, it's not particularly good. I mean, I just don't know what to do. I, I, I'm just gonna take an Omen of the Dead. Yeah. Again, if I can take this, this is exile and the Nomad of the Dead doesn't do anything anymore. But I don't really want to take the Weaver Hippocamp with double remorse put in my hand. I really don't know what to do. I'm just gonna take an Omen of the Dead. Whatever. If I lose this game at this is still arena. No, that's not true. I don't know. I could have I could have killed this, but I have like double remove as well. So Yeah, no, no, no. I'm agonizing remorse is great. Unfortunately, I'm not playing one, but no, I wouldn't return the ores because we exile it. We exile it with the with the agonizing remorse. Okay, so they have this four mana counter magic, so I can't play my Farika spawn. It's basically like spell queller, but it's not a two three. It doesn't fly. Not a spirit.
Hello, Green Jetson. Thank you, thank you for the subscription. Okay, what we're doing here is, Meg, why don't you cast your spell? Okay, so if opponent's holding the counter magic, the, th the worst thing you can do is casting spell into it. So let's just develop our lands and and be able to double spell. Okay, so now we can double spell. So now we are going to play a card that will put my opponent, will, will make my opponent play Ashok Erasure and then we're gonna play another card. Or they're not gonna play the Ashok Erasure. So we're not gonna play the other card. Okay, so opponent decided to play this game, which I'm okay with. So I'm gonna pass again. They will not be able to play this Ashok Erasure once again. And the next turn we're gonna keep on playing double spell as well as making land drop. So this Drogo game definitely favors the player that has threats and no counterspell. That's why I hate counterspell in, 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 in Limited in general. So I'm going to play Farika Spawn. Actually, I'm not going to. I'm just going to pass again. It's very strange if you if you ask me, but I'm happy with this, uh, with this, with this lens of play here. <laughs> it's okay. I'll do that. All right, Brian Giant, a good old seven mana five six. I'm gonna go drag it to the underworld, and on top, and play two spells. Now my opponent has this Ashiox Erasure, so what we're gonna do is Gravebreaker Lamia. Unfortunately, I've drawn my my two escape cards, so we only have one escape card left, and its name is Moji's Favor. I believe. Yeah. And we play a Typhon. Is this draft? It's sealed. Similar. Similar. Alright, lesson that we learned from this deck. Don't play Counterspell. Don't play a card that's worse than Lava Spike. I know it's very hard to picture a card that's worse than Lava Spike, but they actually printed it. And don't play this card. No, 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 no. Okay, let's attack. With my Typhon. Okay, so uh, things that I could do in this game are, I have nine I have nine mana, so I can't double spell here. So once again, I've teach you earlier, you don't play spell into this Ashiok's Erasure. I have a very good deck for sealed. Very, very good. My deck is super powerful. Yes, this says counter target spell, sorry, exile target spell. So it needs to be on the stack. A spell, it's only, I think it's called spell on the, only on the stack. Thank you, Dave and F, for the subscription. Welcome to the stream. Okay, my opponent played another Fruit of Thesaurus, which puts us on thirteen. Risky. It's a, it's a, it's a bad, it's a bad situation to be in. I would never would love to be on thirteen facing two Fruit of Thesaurus. One damage. Okay, now we want to play multiple spells in order to just not target the thing that you've just the thing that you just paid to my is. Just stop black mana first, and then you play Wolf Witch. I mean, I could play a 2-2, two -two, or I could Moji's favor this Voracious Typhoon and reanimate it. I don't know what to do, because like, I'm so ahead here that I just don't know what to do. Allora, un attimo. Tre, cinque. Hmm. I could just do this. All right, I got it. I'll go Moji's favor here. Exiling, funeral rites and swan. Actually, an agonizing remote. You're welcome, Dave and F. I that's that's exactly why I stream. I would like to both entertain myself, people at home, and, and teach if it's possible. Okay, so now this thing is in the graveyard. Although we don't have I oh know we do have spells, yeah. I was like, what's happening? Okay, uh is it about time that our opponent plays this card? Because like they can so what happens with the, the escape card is that they can still counter on the stack. It's not that you can't counter on the stack. So it's about time that actually, whatever. Let's just let's just make a wolf go. And get money. And I mean money is uh, yeah, money is great, obviously, but streaming gives less money than like making article or playing professional magic. For real. Like like, it's not one of my 
let's say, among my incomes of this in last year, streaming is not on top, let's say. But I I do I do I do enjoy it a lot and it's also just just you know future future oh, poss possibility can uh, develop because I am a streamer. Seven minor wolf. Yeah, seven minor wolf is it's not great, but that's okay. Trinka. Exclamation mark article. I I guess I should put it in my Oh che cazzo dici? Oh, no, Arena, Arena, don't do me this. Arena, 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 don't do me this. Okay, I think it's time to make our opponent use their card, or maybe not. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna die. They didn't let me play a swamp. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. I, I, I love this guy, by the way. Reg scared Berserker. This might be the most conservative game I've, I've ever played in my life. Am I decking myself? No, I have 11 cards. It's uh, yeah, this is easily the most conservative game I've Okay, how much money do I have? Seven. Due. Cinque. Otto. Ah, cagare. What does this do? Okay, let's untap this wolf. And uh, I just don't want to play a single spell. I'm going to pass. I'm going to deck myself. It's easy. Easy. I'm going to deck myself. I'm going to lose this game, guys. This Ashok Erasure was basically like... This Ashok Erasure was basically like... You can't play any spell forever. Can you imagine losing this game? Just for a moment. Oh yeah, reveal, it's reveal, your opponent can cast good spells forever, forever. Just like until, until the end of the game. Until the end of the game. Oh, ma porca boia, why can't I play the swamp? Oh, Dio bono. Allora. So, uh, just gonna play Mars, ma Dio caro. What's happening here? I can't cast a single spell. All right, all right, I'm done. I'm gonna double click on my cards from now on. Okay, it's fine. This Farika spawn will be countered. Or, or maybe not. Imagine if it doesn't counter this. Yeah. Oh my God, I didn't counter it. Dio Bono. Okay. My, what happened? I can't draw cards anymore. <laughs> all right. It's a bug when you rake a neck? What? Okay, Elspeth, no, no, the Ashok's Erasure, now I can cast my spell. Oh my god, how does it feel to be able to cast spells finally? <laughs> Alright, okay. Okay, uh, I'm gonna eat the instinction now, so that their minions return, also known as the worst card ever after. You know what, I'm gonna go library. I'm afraid of decking myself. Uh, I mean, I <laughs> this game's so funny, I just, I just did nothing. I just did nothing for the whole game. <laughs> yeah. Third 50, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so basically right now, I just uh, can't draw cards anymore. That's what happened. Okay, by the way, guys, we could have won this game literally five minutes ago if I had cast this whatever was on curve. Inst or, you know, even if I discarded this instead of whatever I discarded. Yeah, the mind games are so good in magic. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, really, it's not really a mind game. Oh, no! Let's do life!
Okay, good game, David Dark. Okay, so what do we do? I already start. I think I get five wins. You don't get paired as same opponents, I believe. I'm playing Paper Magic as well. I might be, I might be bringing the. Okay. Let's go. We got lands and spells. Alfred comes to pre release. Uh, he will count on pre release on Sunday. On Sunday. Friday and Saturday will just be me. <laughs> From Senegalia. I thought you could pair by record. I, I, I don't know. I, I honestly, nobody knows. People just pretend to know that. People just assume they read it on their uh, Reddit one time and that's gonna be the truth forever. But overall, they just do whatever they want. And that's fine, like, who cares? If you're 5 and 1, you get paired against a person with some lava spike in their deck. That That's great, isn't it? Okay, let's go. Swamp, your turn. Well, put a mulligan. Land, land. Okay, okay. I can't, I can't eat that anymore because I am on a strict diet. Ooh! How does it feel to just play Moji's Favor and kill a creature? <sighs> Moji's Favor is, is really one of my... No! My poor cowboy, I didn't read this card. Whenever it dies, I thought it never deals damage. Alright, still fine. Like, it's not the end of the world, but I thought this card was different. I thought it was the red one. Okay, sure. It still feels nice. Okay, we got a 2-1 March Trident, which is very good, especially with uh, uh, a Farika spot in our hand. It would have been better if I had a, Mar a Magius Fairy in the graveyard, but I don't. So. Taranika. Lamika. Lamika Taranika. Taranika is pretty powerful. It's a 3 1 3 3 Vigilance. Whenever it attacks, you untap another target creature and you give him blah, 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 blah. But we don't really care because we're just going to curve out with things that are strong, whereas our opponent. I might even attack here. You know what? F you, Taranika. Taranika, la mano amica. And I'll play a 3 4 or 3 3. I'll play a 3 4. Looks better. I opened this in my second draft for Taranika. And I picked it. And then I went white. And I never drew it in my game, in my match. But I saw. Four lands. Dreadful Apathy. Very powerful card. So I traded two, two damage for three. Not ideal, but it is what it is. I'll keep on, I keep on attacking here. I feel like they. Yeah, they can't really have that many. That many removal spells, right? Okay, what am I milling? Whoa, I milled a Fierce Bang Brawler, which is a perfect card to get back. Good night, Mental Misstep. Thank you very much for hanging around, for subscribing. I'll see you next time. I won't be here tomorrow. I will be here on Monday to play more standard. This weekend is just pre-release, so I won't be home. My bed will be untouched. Because I'm going to just go. Actually, no. I'll, I'll sleep in my bed on sun, on Saturday. That's true. Hippocampo. Wow, Hippocampo is very powerful. Too bad that we have this powerful saga in our hand. Uh, do I play land? Yes, I do. Elspeth's, Elspeth Nightmare comes into play, kills the Hippocampo, and then next turn we can do Duress. Okay, who do I attack with? I guess with 3-3, three, three. yeah. I offer the trade with Taranika. I want to attack first because if they have a combat trick, at least they don't play and draw card. So. Yeah, but again, I would definitely need advices for sure. Yeah, I book, I book my hotel uh, next to the Lingotto. Why not attack with both? Uh, I don't want to. Tr I don't want to uh, to exchange three damage for two. This attacks for two. Opponent takes five and attack me for three. You know, so I don't want to exchange. No, you, you, you very hard. Just general rule of magic: decks are forty cards and sixty cards. Okay, they put Hippocampo back on top. We're gonna duress them. They have a land on top in the end, though. So. Uh, the saga is not very good when it's late in the game. 
Hippocampus is super good, and this pot cowboy the discard spell doesn't do anything to your Bono. It's actually fine, because like you can exhaust something from the graveyard. But not now. Alright, so we play Acolyte of Affliction, we mill two cards, and we get back the Fierce Band. Whoa, we mill the thing. Blah, 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 blah. We get back the unbeatable six mana four four that does blah blah blah. And I pass the turn. But by the way, yeah, general rule, 40 cards. 40 cards. Like we never came close to decking ourselves in this in the in this sealed. Okay, they play the Hippocampo, and they pass, because I trade if they attack. I exile the graveyard with Elspeth Nightmare, and I play the Fierce Bend Brawler and kill this Hippocamp, I think. I could also just not kill the Hippocamp. Hmm. I could just put into play a 7-7. How would that be? I don't think that's bad at all, yeah. So I'm just going to put a 7-7 over the Fierce Bend Brawler. And if your opponent will uh, draw a card with this, I'll... But it would never be 3 damage for 2 if he trades. Yeah, but you don't know if he trades. Yeah, but I, I understand, but like, overall, uh, if you don't account the fact that my opponent trade, it would be 2 damage for 3 if they do trade. If they don't trade, sorry. Okay, so I'm, I'm milling uh, spells. Actually, it doesn't matter anymore. Wow, just imagine just milling and just get your ferocious typhoon. Boom, just 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, this card is pretty unfair. Just overall, the escape cards are pretty unfair. Okay, so Dreadful Apathy is very good with the uh, escape cards. Okay, what did I draw? Wait, did I trade? Oh, wow, they traded earlier. I did not expect that. Okay, they drew another Lagona Storyteller. This is good. No, this is seven mana. Seven, we'll pay seven mana. Okay, my opponent can't. I'm just gonna play this Fierce Band Brawler. They got back the uh, Dreadful Apathy, though. You're gonna play a Fierce Band Brawler, shoot the Lagona Band Storyteller, and attack for seven. But I will be able to kill my Typhoon. And now, now I mean, that could that could just stop deck and win. Sorry, that, we are now in a top deck mode where I, I am ahead. Having a 4 4 against a 3 4, but I can just draw a bunch of. Alright, so that's attack for 4. Uh, and then if a player draws like a 1 1 now, you know, we're just. Good morning, Wimbo. Yeah, Swordtail, I mean, Swordtail is a great card. This is just a very, very powerful card. Do you have Enchantment Destruction in your deck? I do not. I did not open any Naturalize. Okay, the Scout. Which is pretty bad filler, but... It's not, sorry, it's not a pretty bad filler. It's a pretty... It's, it's an okay filler. This card is perfectly fine. All right, I'm gonna keep on attacking just with this. There's just no reason to attack like this because they block this one and then they deal me six. They could play Omen of the Hunt right now. Spirit Mantle, ayya, vaccagare. Maybe I should have played Agonizing Remorse first. Yes, 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 I should have done that. Yes, I should have done that. I could lose this game now. Yes, yes, I should have done that. I should have cast Agonizing Remorse there. Wow, imagine losing this game. Another one? My porca, why is it uncommon? Probably play three of these. Dreadful Apathy on top. What's your opinion on Timaretti Limited? It's it's good. I mean, it's a two drop. You play it. It's, it's not broken or anything. <sighs> Caputana. Hopefully they don't play this Dreadful Apathy. I mean, I guess they will, though. I play also gain nine life. With this Lagona Bond Storyteller. If I could just go Agonizing Remorse, I would have had a 4 4 in play. I have 10 lands. Did I mill some lands? I milled 2, so 12 lands. In our deck, we have 14 cards. We have 9 spell. Ah, porca madosca. We have uh, more spells now. No, no, a hand. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna take that. At least we exiled it. No attacks. 
Okay, so we have right now nine spell, three land. No, sorry, ten spell, three lands in our deck. That tack. All right, obviously we double block. I'm not gonna play around any top deck. Also because when it's seven lands, they must have drawn a land. Diobono. Your cattle. They move system. Yeah. All right, come on, big creature. Do I have even? Great. I think I mailed them all. All right. Moss Viper. <laughs> pretty pretty medium, but now it does the thing. All right, attack with that one and that one. Sure. I right, trade. There's no point in keep on taking three damage here. Because I could draw a creature and then just pretend to double block. Mars Grasp. All right, wait one second. They have a, a Revoke Existence. I'll pass here. I, I don't want to play Mars Grasp on this and attack. It just, just doesn't make any sense. They have... It's fine. GeoDMG. It's, it's not that bad. Our opponent, please hold the land. Don't play a spell. Come on. Oh, Bel Peschino. Mills to spell. Tiana. Oh, he's excited to remove a spell. How many cards have in my deck? I have six cards. It's not that many. Alright, I'm gonna go to three cards in my deck now. All right, I have three cards in my deck now. I said I would have never came close to decking, but I am fucked getting close there. Because I'm putting this on eight, and I have three cards in my deck. All right. So let's go Drek to the Underworld. Let's go Mars Grasp. Hmm, counter Magic. Okay, I have two cards in my deck. Opponent goes to five. If they draw land, we're good here. Bella Terra, Dio Bono. Uh, yeah, attacking with both. I have one card in my deck. Opponent goes to two. If they draw a land, we win this game. Can you imagine that? With zero cards in the deck? Come on, opponent, draw land. Pass. Attack. Pass. Last land of the deck. With zero cards in the deck. See! Two! Boom! Woof! It's not lucky, we just opponent drew 10 lands, we drew 17. How is that lucky? Victory, zero cards in the deck on the very last.